What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about some of the big differences, the pros and cons for HDR versus off-camera flash. I know it's been a minute since my last video, but I appreciate y'all's support. I'm glad to see you guys here, let's go. Make sure to subscribe if you're interested in this type of content. Uh, support means a ton. The channel's basically doubled since the last time I uploaded a video, like a month ago. So, sorry for the delay. I've been doing some big client projects, so I've had to prioritize that for the time being. But, lots of stuff in the works, on the plans. Yes. <laughs> so now let's get into these photos. So as you guys know, I had my business in Houston and I moved recently. So in order to keep helping out some of my clients, I've been kind of managing some projects that my friend's been doing for them from Virginia remotely. And I've been doing a lot of the editing and stuff like that. So in order to keep the style pretty consistent to how I used to shoot, I got my friend to shoot with off camera flash for the first time with just one flash. So I thought this would be a good example for you guys to see if you're getting into this, you're new to off-camera flash, uh, just how your images can turn out with just a little bit of experience, trial and error, and that's pretty much it. So first off, here's some examples of just HDR versus off-camera flash of the exact same shot. So what I got him to do is shoot HDR, have the tripod set up and everything nice and normal, and then while he was still there, I got him to do a off-camera flash shot to fill in the interior a little bit more. And it's really cool to just see the difference and how they came out from the same shot, HDR versus off-camera flash, because you don't see that too much. So I'm excited for you guys to see the difference, and I'm going to go into some pros and cons for both, because there are pros and cons for both. So I'm sure the first thing you're going to think about is oh man, gear is going to cost so much to get into any of this. But I have good news for you. Pretty much most cameras out on the market are good. You basically are just going to need any camera that has interchangeable lenses. And then that way you can work with whatever crop factor your camera has and get the right lens so it's wide enough to, to show the spaces. That's pretty much it. So for HDR, you can pretty much just get a tripod, your camera, the right size lens, memory cards, your computer, but then that's pretty much it. Off camera flash is a little different. So obviously you're gonna need to get your flash and you're gonna need to get it off your camera. So you're gonna have to have a trigger system or you're just gonna have to have a flash that's compatible with your camera. I know that sounds really expensive, but the good news is you can actually get a good flash system today for under $100. So the next thing you're probably asking is, how much time does it take to edit each of these? And from my experience, it's actually a lot faster to edit off-camera flash photos because you usually just have like one or two layers that you're gonna be working with versus having to sit there and merge these big photo files into HDR photos, which, you know, sometimes takes like 30 seconds to a minute just, just to do that. And then it's like really slow editing it. I mean, I have a good computer, but it's still, the HDR stuff seems to trip it up, kind of makes it really slow. With off-camera flash, you're just gonna have one photo, two photos that you're editing. You're not merging anything in Lightroom. That can really speed you up. Probably a good estimate for each of those is HDR usually takes me about an hour plus to edit a set of photos. And off camera flash can actually be like 30, 40 minutes maybe. So if you're doing a lot of photos or want more time away from the computer, which I know, <laughs> I know I do, I get sick of editing, um, that like $100 investing into your flash and some time learning is gonna save you a lot of time in the long run. This is one where there's a lot of pros and a lot of cons for both of these. <laughs> That's one of the main reasons I prefer off-camera flash is because the colors you get out of it, you just can't even compare. Unless you are shooting in a house that just has crazy amounts of natural light coming in, like huge windows, 
you're gonna constantly be battling with like tungsten lights, magenta tinted lights, green tinted lights, all that stuff for HDR. So a lot of times with that, you're gonna end up having to wash out some of the colors. You're gonna have to desaturate them like crazy to where they're not just screwing up your image. And yeah, basically it's just, it's a hit or miss. Some houses look great in HDR, some houses look like just total trash. <laughs> but HDR is a good way to start learning composition and everything. So for using off-camera flash, what you're doing is you're bouncing your flash off of something that's neutral or white, usually, if, if it's there. And that is bouncing into the interior to where all of your stuff is gonna just look like the colors that it is. And you're gonna be using a daylight colored flash to where it matches the colors of light that are coming in from outside as well. So basically, you're not gonna to have to desaturate your outside view, you're not gonna to have to desaturate your inside colors. You're just gonna get a little more rich colors, a lot more accurate colors, softer lighting, all that stuff. And it's gonna be consistent from shoot to shoot which is the biggest plus ever. <laughs> The next thing where they are totally different is your window details. I know we just talked about color accuracy, but your view from inside to outside is gonna be the same color temperature. It's gonna be daylight color temperature. So your view through the window is actually gonna be a lot more accurate without having to do a bunch of crazy editing. So that's a huge plus. All right, I know I'm basically just saying all the good things about off-camera flash and all the things I don't like about HDR, but I do want to say a few good things about HDR. Like, let's say you're shooting like a covered porch or something where it's dark, a lot darker than it is on the outside of it because it's not shaded. Uh, if you're doing HDR, you can get the whole view, looks really nice, and a lot of times that's a good selling point for the listing if that's the type of shoot you're doing. From time to time, you'll get like really cool sunbeams coming through the window uh, that you're not gonna get as much of if you're doing off-camera flash. So sometimes you'll get like a little more of like a stylized image, and I think that's cool. There's definitely a time and a place for each type of image. I'm kind of having to pull these out of nowhere, but because <laughs> I really don't like HDR that much. But another perk for HDR is Whenever a space is just really nicely lit, you're there at the right time of day, it's a lot faster to shoot HDR. And if it looks good in real life and colors look good, uh, you're not really gonna be needing to work against a bunch of problems. If it's got a lot of windows, then go ahead, go shoot HDR, I'll do that. Clients don't know, I mean, you gotta make your own call on what works best to advertise that space and sometimes sometimes it does work better <laughs> so it's good to know both but yeah you know which ones are my favorite so let me know in the comments though i want to know what you guys think about each of these all right so what does this mean for you hopefully this video was helpful just so you could see some practical examples and what it might look like the first time you try off-camera flash or HDR. When I was learning how to shoot off-camera flash, I was actually just learning how to do photography in general. <laughs> Before that, I had just shot some pictures of my artwork and they were so bad looking back at them. <laughs> so I was learning all the camera settings, tripod stuff, uh, flash, off-camera flash, all at once. So I think it's a lot better. You're gonna have a lot better time learning if you start out with HDR, learn your compositions, and then slowly start adding in flash in some scenarios where it's a little darker. See what you think about it. Try it at home. Don't try it out for the first time on a shoot because that, you know, you're just gonna be stressed and stuff. So just try it out at home. Even if you don't have a cool house, uh, you can still learn what you're doing and learn how to use it. And then go from there, see what you like. All right guys, that's about it for this one. Just wanted to let you know if you like this video and watch it this far, I'm actually selling a new preset pack, which I'm gonna have linked in the description for Airbnb, 
HDR and off-camera flash photo editing for Lightroom. So if you liked how these looked, it would be a good starting point for you to get a similar result using HDR or off-camera flash, whichever one you're choosing. So link in description for that and I hope they help you guys. Uh, super pumped about them and yeah. Quickly just wanted to say again, thank you guys so much for subscribing, for liking my videos, for watching the videos, sharing them. The support's just been insane. Um, so I just, I, it means a lot and I hope that that means that I'm doing stuff that's helpful and making an impact on you guys' life. So thank you, thank you, thank you. A uh, lot more coming soon and make sure if you're not subscribed, if you're new to the channel, to subscribe real quick push like, leave a comment. If you got any questions or concerns, always get back to you guys and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.